In the occupied territories, Ukrainians live in constant fear, and so it will be in the future. This fact must be understood by the Trump team, which wants to secure the right of the Russian Federation to the occupied territories. Journalists from The Economist write that under the new government in Washington, they must be aware of how people live in the occupied territories. One of the representatives of the Ukrainian resistance stated that in the occupied territories, people are afraid of each other and especially of expressing their views out loud. If you don't have a Russian passport, you have no rights. It's like being a refugee, but only in your own land. All key positions are occupied exclusively by Russians. The population with pro-Ukrainian views is afraid of ending up in the basement. It is worth remembering that there is not a single Ukrainian school in the occupied territory and the entire curriculum is Russian. Without a Russian passport, it is impossible not only to send a child to school, but also to receive medical care. Nikolai Petrov, an employee of the German Institute for International and Security Affairs, said that the Kremlin is using repressive methods to curb Ukrainians in the captured territory. At the very beginning of 2022, 6.4 million people lived in the occupied territories of Donbass, but now only 3.5 million remain. Due to an acute shortage of labor, the Kremlin is sending citizens of its own country to the occupied territories. The war between Russia and Ukraine is escalating as newly elected US President Donald Trump promises to end the conflict. According to the Wall Street Journal, Trump has not yet said how exactly he plans to end the war. At the same time, Russian President Vladimir Putin said he is ready for peace talks, but only if his previous demands for the transfer of occupied Ukrainian territory to Russian control are met. It makes sense that both sides are trying to make any progress if there is a chance that peace talks can take place, said Ruslan Pukov, head of the Moscow-based center for analysis of strategies and technologies. While Russia is trying to make progress on the ground, Ukraine's best chance of responding is drone strikes. Moscow has plugged some of the holes in its troop numbers with North Korean soldiers, giving the Kremlin the option of avoiding a broader Russian mobilization, although they are unlikely to have a lasting effect without further reinforcements. Ukraine, however, has even more serious personnel problems, the newspaper notes. In addition, there is a threat that the United States will cut off military aid to Ukraine, which will leave it vulnerable both on the front lines and in the rear, where the air defense munitions provided by the United States are a valuable resource in the face of Russian bombings. Over the past 24 hours, the Ukrainian Defense Forces have killed and wounded about 1,770 Russian occupiers in battle. The soldiers also destroyed 272 units of military equipment and weapons of the Russian troops on the front. The total number of manpower losses suffered by the enemy on Ukrainian soil over more than 2.8 years of full-scale war amounts to approximately 710,660 invaders. The General Staff of the Armed Forces of Ukraine reported updated data as of November 11. In addition to the large number of invaders, the defenders on the eve subtracted 40 combat armored vehicles, 34 artillery systems, and 4 tanks from the Russian army. Two Russian cruise missiles and 57 operational tactical level drones were shot down in the sky. The fighters burned another 119 units of enemy vehicles and tankers, and 16 units of special equipment. The remaining losses of the Russian armed forces in the war against Ukraine remained at the same level, minus 1,245 MLRS, 996 air defense systems, 369 aircraft, 329 helicopters, 28 ships slash boats and a submarine. As the general staff notes, 160 combat clashes were recorded during the past day. There were three attacks by the occupiers in the Kupyan direction during the day. The defense forces repelled enemy assaults near Kindrasivka, Zagrazovi and Zeleny Gay. In the Lyman direction, the enemy attacked six times. He tried to advance near the settlements of Grakivka, Terny, Torsky and Serebryanka. In the Kramatorsk direction, Three clashes were recorded in the areas of Stepaki and Shesevoy Yar. In the direction of Toritsk, the enemy launched 16 attacks near Toritsk and Sherbanivka. 
In the Pokrovsky direction, our defenders stopped 35 assault and offensive actions of the aggressor in the areas of Myro-Lubivka, Promeny, Hryharivka, Solidovoy, Lasivka, Sikoy Yar, and Petrivka. The senior advisor to President-elect Donald Trump said that the new administration will focus on achieving peace in Ukraine, and not on giving Ukraine the opportunity to return the territories occupied by Russia. Brian Lanza, the strategist of the Republican Party, told the BBC that the Trump administration will ask the president of Ukraine, Volodymyr Zelensky, to present his version of the realistic vision of the world. And if President Zelensky sits down at the negotiating table and says that we can have peace only if we have Crimea, he will show us that he is not serious, he said. The president-elect constantly declares that his priority is ending the war and stopping what he describes as the leakage of U.S. resources in the form of military aid to Ukraine. Mr. Lanza, Trump's political advisor since his 2016 election campaign, said that the return of Crimea is unrealistic and not the goal of the United States. When Zelensky says that we will end these hostilities, that peace will come only after the return of Crimea, we have news for President Zelensky, there is no more Crimea, he said in the BBC World Service weekend program. And if the return of Crimea is a priority for you, and American soldiers must fight for the return of Crimea, then you are on your own. The USA has never sent American soldiers to fight in Ukraine, and Kiev has not asked American troops to fight on its behalf. Ukraine requested American military aid only to arm its soldiers. Opponents of Trump from the Democratic Party accuse him of rapprochement with the President of Russia, Vladimir Putin, and say that his approach to war is tantamount to the surrender of Ukraine, which will threaten the whole of Europe. Нормальная защита. Смотри, какая у него защита, братан. У него кирпичи защита были. Да, вот такую ямочку врывает. Противокумулятивный мангал был. Офигеть, он просто как чупа-чупа споткнулся в землю. 